Okay, fellow YouTubers, I know the light's a little shitty, but uh, I'm out in the shop tonight. And I recently picked up this little Lakefield 22 semi automatic. It's in really good shape. The pitchers, there's a little bit of paint on the thing there, but the pitchers that the guy had posted. It really looked like the finish was all peeling off it. I was expecting I was going to have to sand it down and everything, but I got the rifle. It's got a 2.5 by 32 Japanese made Tasco scope for 150 bucks. That's pretty good around here. Um, but it's a little sluggish. You can tell there's, there's a lot of dirt in there. The trigger doesn't feel right. It just, it needs to be clean, so. I'll show you how to disassemble this particular rifle and then I will uh, clean it and show you the reassembly. I've already broken the the uh, screws loose. Take the magazine out, don't need that. I want to lock the bolt to the back. We don't need it for this step but we will need that eventually. It's a single screw takedown like a lot of 22s. Take that screw off. That frees up your stock. Okay. Make sure we're still in focus here. All right. Now, this whole trigger group and the magazine well are hold on by these three screws. <coughs> So we'll take this back one out first. I'm not sure why this is so big. It doesn't seem to have any purpose. It's not threaded or anything. But we'll get rid of that. Then we'll take a Phillips. We'll turn these other two out. And I'm using padded barrel jaws on this. Want to keep a hold of these if you're anywhere where you can, where you're gonna risk losing them. With that third one, take the whole thing off in one piece. So that gives you the trigger group. So it's it's pretty oily. <laughs> way more oil and dirt than it should be so I'm not going to take that apart and clean it but I'm going to spray it down and scrub it now to get the rest of it apart this is where you need the bolt lock back and take this nut out which takes this little c-shaped piece out which locks your barrel and everything together so grab a wrench for that Of course, I have the wrong size wrench. All right, there we go. So that comes off, and that comes off. And pull your action right off. And this extractor piece. I'm not sure. I don't need to remove that. I'm not exactly sure how that comes out. I never removed one of those, but I don't want to mess with it and break it. I'm going to leave that right in there. Clean that the way it is with a bronze brush. Give it a spray some rim oil. The oil that's on there right now is just like grease, so that rim oil will uh, it'll soften it up. Take my bronze brush and I'm going to 
clean the extractor groove there. There's that part. Now for your bolt. When I release this, the bolt's going to travel forward. So pull back, pull up. Spring tension's off of it. Once you get to this section here, this will pull right out. Set that aside. And. Leave oh, it a little longer, I guess. There we go. Now that bolt will pull right out. Should pull right out. If it was cleaner, it would pull right out. Boys, boys, that's dirty. Okay, so there's your stripped receiver. You want to check the operation of this. That's nice and free. Okay. That's nice and free. So everything here seems to be working the way it should. It's just dirty. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to spray this down with rim oil, scrub it with a bronze brush. Now I'm getting filthy here. Okay, so I just stopped and put some gloves on to keep myself clean here. Give that a good spraying. Rub it in, move everything around, make sure nothing's binding. Take this bronze brush. And you can really see all the dirt and gunk that's in there. Scrub the body of everything. Scrub in around that spring. And remember that these little rimfire rifles are blowbacks. And uh, even though the bullets left the barrel before the action opens, there's still gas and a little bit of powder residue and other things that that uh, blow back there okay so that that feels a lot better than it did just a few minutes ago okay now this here like I said I'm not going to take this apart this is not crucial Everything is, well it's crucial to it firing, but this won't stop it from loading the next round. That's usually the problem you'll get with these. The uh, poor little things get so dirty that the blowback doesn't have enough pressure to cycle it. But since we got it apart, we'll give her a little scrub. So it already feels better than it did before, even this piece. Before I gave it a spray, the oil was right thick and it's just, it's like it took a second for everything to come back to where it was. So as I'm cleaning this, what I'll do is get everything clean, set it down the bench. I'll give it a good spraying before I put everything back together and wipe it down and whatever oil's left is what's left. So here's the magazine well. My little brush just barely fits in there, so I'll give this a spray. Okay. 
Now there's probably people out there just screaming well, that's not the right way, that's not the right way, but this works fine for me. This is all I do with them when they get dirty. Now this one here is the hard part. We got to get everything inside of here cleaned up. Now, yeah, that's still pretty tight fit in there, so there's still some junk in it. So I'll just soak that right down. Now I'm going to grab a uh, shotgun bore brush and I use that to clean that out. Okay, so I got an old, I couldn't find a 12, I got a 20 gauge brush here. You're not going to believe the amount of junk that's going to come out of this. Okay, so really everything in there should be nice and shiny. You see how it's right gray ish colored? Maybe you can see. I'm gonna wrap this in something. I'm gonna stick it in there. See if I can pick some of that out. Ooh. Oh, there. there we go. So it's not as bad as the last one I did. So there's that action. I'm just going to try this in there again. Remember how tight it was the first time I tried that. So imagine that poor anemic little 22 round trying to cycle that poor thing. Repeat my process here. Make sure I get all the little crooks and crannies and crevices. I'll use half a piece this time. Cram that right up in there. We want to be able to turn this. See it turn in there. There, now we got a nice that on camera. Nice shiny, nice shiny surface, not a gray, gross one. I'm just gonna turn the camera off for a few minutes while I wipe down all these parts and then we'll reassemble. So you want to pay special attention to these grooves in the bolt. You get a lot of dirt build up there. Get that nice and clean. And the copious amounts of oil that are on my hands, there's enough lubricant. I've already wiped everything else down. So we'll go ahead and reassemble this. This flat side here goes down that groove here will line up with this chair push down That'll lock in. Now, rotate that so that everything's pointing where it should be. Now, just be very careful not to break this off. Make sure everything lines up. Now, 
we take this little clip and the short end oh, wrong way. <laughs> short end goes on the forward side get in there you maybe it goes the other way around Turn this so I can see what I'm doing. All right, now she's lined up. So, short end goes towards the back. A seven sixteenths wrench, not a half inch. So you want to snug. Seems to be working fine. I'll turn this right upside down now. And we can start putting on our trigger group and our magazine well. Magazine well locks in underneath that clip we put on earlier and over top of the trigger group. Now this big ugly piece goes in the back again. I don't know why it's so big. It doesn't do anything. I just want to put these in loose. You don't have to tighten them up. Or you don't want to tighten them up until you get everything started. Two. I never understand why they use different style heads on the same piece of equipment. Okay, so that's all on there. Now I'm going to take a rag, just wipe this down a little before we stick the stock on. I've got oil everywhere. the stock Our flat screw Now one thing that people tend to forget when they're cleaning is the magazine. This, I don't clean magazines every time, but you do have to check them. All you need to do is push that follower down, make sure it's not binding. This one's not, it's just fine. Put that around. There we go. That should do it. That's my Lakefield Model 64B. Um, you find the same gun in a Savage or a Kiwi, I think. It's the IL maybe. Uh, they made them under a few different brands. This one is branded Lakefield. Unfortunately, I can't test fire it right now, but I am going to get this to the range soon and see how it does. Now that everything cycles the way it should. Thanks for watching, guys.